and just, you know, I was just dreaded doing some things like this. And now after not having it and realizing how easily it could be all gone, not having this, um, I'm more grateful for every ounce of this process. Incredibly quick start to the fight tonight. Were you anticipating it to be, you know, that much of a, of a barn burner right off the bat? Yeah, you know, I think, you know, I heard Daniel say things like uh, he wanted to show me right away that, that, you know, the two years will affect me and that I'm not meant to be here and things like that. So we knew that uh, we knew there wasn't going to be a filling out process. Uh, we knew there wasn't going to be time for ring rest. Um, we knew we were going to have to get straight to business, and, and that's what happened. You said you were going to get the finish. I mean, did you envision that type of, of knockout, you know, a high kick, you know, finishing it the way you did? Did, did you see that as a possibility? Yeah, yeah, we expected uh, to finish Daniel Cormier. I, I said it in several interviews before the fight. Um, there was a day in practice where uh, we found uh, five other guys who gives me the hardest time. And uh, my coaches made me match up against all of them. They had one round each and five rounds. And I finished uh, three out of the five which is something I've never been able to do before. I had two TKOs and a submission. And my coaches told me after that practice, they said, John, you are stepping into your prime, my friend. And uh, they said, it's time for you to expect to finish fights, expect more out of yourself, uh, both in your personal life and uh, at work. And, uh, and that's what I've been doing. I've been expecting more out of myself, holding myself to a higher standard. And, uh, and I feel like it showed tonight. Very classy address towards Daniel afterwards. I wonder, was that spontaneous or was it something that's been weighing heavy on you that you wanted to get out there? I mean, obviously, pre-fight buildup isn't exactly the time to do that, but right. was that something that just came to you all, all of a sudden or had you wanted to get that out there? Well, I've always felt that way about Daniel, um, uh, but it was spontaneous. 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 Um, um, I've always felt like he's a, he's a pretty classy guy. Um, guy to be respected. Stand-up champion, model champion, uh, but uh, unfortunately, you know, I came into this game at a young age with big ideas, and uh, despite how good of a person he is, there's no mercy in combat, and uh, and I have to do what I have to do. All right, it's either me or him, and so, um, so um, you know, what happened happened, but um, he should be respected. And I don't think he should ever be um, questioned whether he was a true champion or not in my absence. He, he, he uh, fought uh, two of the toughest guys in, in the division. He won those fights. And, uh, and, and he carries himself like a champion. So I, I think that should be recognized. Last thing for me, John, the call out of Brock Lesnar, I think, was a little bit unexpected. Talk about the genesis of that, where that was coming from, and, and why you're motivated to do that. You know, to be honest with you, I have no clue where this Brock Lesnar situation came from, how it started. Um, uh, but it got serious really quick. And um, I started talking to my, my management team, first round management, and my team at Jackson's MMA. And I said, well, what do you guys think if this was to happen? And uh, obviously my manager's like, well, it's going to be a big payday, right? That's his job, right? Make me money. Um, but uh, but my my team at Jackson's MMA, Jackson Wink, they said, uh, they said, John, you can win that fight. You know, you're going to have to dig deep. You're going to have to take your self-belief to a higher level. Uh, you're going to have to earn this fight. Obviously, you're going to have to change a lot, you know, fighting at a at 225 or 230. Um, but so you can do this. And, uh, and so we made up in our mind that we were serious about it. And I think it'd be great for the MMA world, right? It would definitely bring more general public to uh, the sport of mixed martial arts. And, uh, and that's what we need. We need to expand our sport. And so why not be the guy to play a part in that? John, back here, uh, what does it say about you? And you were pretty confident going in that you would perform like that tonight, but Dana was even blown away. Everybody here to see you do that after the amount of time you've been off all the things that you've been through. I mean, you were overwhelmed at the end, but what does it say about your overall greatness in your career that you can come back in and do what I don't think anybody could come back in and do Sorry. tonight? Thanks. Yeah, man, uh, you know, we made a shirt that said, I'm broken. And, and I've made that my, my kind of life motto or slogan, whatever, it's just to be unbroken and to believe in, and, uh, believe in your dreams despite 
you know, how you get sidetracked in life, uh, just to just to remember why we started this and remember how great we all can be. And uh, yeah, man, it, it just shows that, man, that, uh, you know, that uh, can't be broken, can't bend me, can't break me. And uh, and I, I feel that way right now. I, I feel, feel stronger than ever. And I hope that this story motivates somebody else to, to get on their feet and kick some ass in life. That being said, as good as you were tonight, how much better can you be now that you quote unquote have your life together and outside of the cage is seeming to be aligned with inside of the cage and you hitting your prime all at the same time? How much better can you be even than you are now? As far as saying I have my life together, you know, life is a, it's a day by day thing, you know, you gotta just try to make good decisions from one situation, one day at a time. So, you know, my life is still a work in progress, but uh, I feel like I can be much better tonight. Defensively, I felt like uh, that I wasn't the sharpest. I got caught with some really, really big punches, some, some big hooks. Thank God for blessing me with a good chin. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I feel like the best is yet to come. You know, I, at age 30, I feel like I'm in my physical and mental prime. And just believing that will allow me to train at a higher level and just expect more out of myself. So I feel like my best years are still ahead of me. And I think it should be very scary to a lot of these light heavyweights that I'm still the youngest guy in the division and I uh, and want to be here for a long time. Hey, John, right John. here. Um, I, I think Kevin started first. Okay, I was quick. Respect your elders. <laughs> Always. Congratulations, John. Um, Thanks. Can you compare this, uh, put this in context with your win over Shogun Hua when you set the record, you become the youngest champion, and that was such a dominant performance, and it's kind of like now, in a way, you come full circle. How do, you, how do those two compare to you? Um, you know, they, they were definitely very similar. In, the, in a way, it feels like uh, it, this fight feels like uh, my first championship ever, almost, because I feel like... Uh, I feel like I have a new beginning. You know, I went through such a dark period, and it's, uh, depression and all these things. And, uh, and now the light is here at the end of the tunnel, and I feel like I'm leaving my past behind me. Um, and I'm just, you know, I'm erasing everything that I've done before. I feel like uh, this is the start to a new career, a new championship, and I feel like I want to, to be a, a better champion than I was in the past. So I feel like a, I feel like a new champion. This is this is my time to start all over, and to uh, and to uh, just be a better champion and be the champion that the fans deserve. So that's how it compares. How much? I'm not sure if that made sense, but it made sense to me. Well, how was your mom in your mind tonight? This is your first fight since you lost your mom. What was that? My was mom she... has been in my mind for sure, for sure. Um, yeah. Um, Glad that she got to watch the fight tonight, front row. She had the best seat in the house. And uh, yeah, I know she'd be extremely proud right now. So yeah, I'm happy. And I just wanted to follow up on one other thing. Uh, do you plan to, if Brock does take the fight, and he said, be careful what you wish for, young man. So I told Greg Beecham that. But if, uh, if he does take the fight, would you think of campaigning as a heavyweight? And if he doesn't come back because of his suspension and everything else he has, you know, a fight with you and Stipe would certainly, you know, he's not that massive heavyweight that, that a Brock is. Would that be something people have talked to you about fighting heavyweight a long time? Would yeah. you consider campaigning there? Um, I feel like if I was to take a fight at heavyweight, um, it would be against a person who I feel me and my coaches that felt like it was just a perfect matchup for me. Right now, Steve is looking extremely impressive. And I believe when you get an extremely talented big guy versus an extremely talented little guy, I mean, a lot of the cards are in his favor. Um, at the same time, I fear no man, but um, I just, I strike, I strike for a reason when I strike. And, uh, and uh, I feel like Steve is relatively unknown to the general public. So uh, it wouldn't even be a real super fight, in my opinion. I think the MMA fans would be really excited about it, but the general public wouldn't care about that fight. Most people don't really know who he is, with all due respect to him. So if I'm going to uh, sacrifice being the smaller guy, uh, I think stylistically, uh, Brock would be a fight that makes way more sense, and the payday would be tremendous, and what it would do for our sport would be tremendous. It would have much greater impact. Um, so for many reasons, a Brock Lesnar fight just makes more sense to me. 
from a, from a timing standpoint, um, I'm here. From a timing standpoint, um, it may not, he may, may not be able to fight for a while, and you may have to have a fight before that, possibly. Um, and, I mean, what do, what do you think of, say, uh, Gustafson or Ozdemir? And did you see the Ozdemir fight by any chance? I did watch Ozdemir fight tonight. I thought uh, he did a great job. Um, you know, I, I'm not going to really make comments on, on anyone else. I, I don't want any headlines uh, tomorrow to be about any other fighter. This is uh, my moment. And, uh, and when the time comes to, to get talked to about uh, a possible opponent, uh, then we'll let the head headlines come out. But as of right now, I'll let them be about uh, the great thing that happened tonight. Um, obviously, with you calling out Brock, that, that's a new challenge, and, and you know it's a bigger challenge. When you look longer term at your career, uh, with what you've accomplished, do you, do you think you can be satisfied staying light heavyweight and just taking on the next number one contender who comes? Yeah, um, I feel like uh, you know people always say to me, "Well, well, you know, you're too long," or or you're too big, and it's cheating that you are a light heavyweight. But I can't control the way God built me. And uh, one thing that I can't control is my weight management. And I do a very good job at that. Uh, I literally had ice cream this week, pancakes this week. Um, I did things to keep my weight up. Uh, tonight I fought at 215, which is light. Um, so I feel like uh, I have a lot more years at light heavyweight. And like I said, uh, the only times that I will move to heavyweight is for uh, a, f a fight that really gets fans excited or eventually challenging for that title um, against the perfect stylistic matchup for me. And, and I mean, even thinking about this, Brock, I mean, is this something that, that, that fight that, you know, over the last two years the sport has changed and we've sort of seen, you know, things that we didn't know were possible just in terms of the promotion. Has it been you sitting on the sideline and watching those challenges and realize, or watching those new developments and yeah. realizing that new things are possible? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, you know, like a guy like Conor McGregor, you know, he has been a, a tremendous inspiration to me. Um, you know, he has shown me who has been in the upper echelon of this sport for many years now. He's shown me that these these huge paydays are possible. I never thought in my time as a champion, as a fighter, that I would see fighters making you know seventy million dollars or hundred million dollars or whatever he's making in this Mayweather fight. Uh, it's been an inspiration that that you can do it. It's like the first guy to go to the moon, right? And, and now everybody wants to go to the moon. It's like the first guy who ran a five-minute mile, and now everyone sees that it's possible. And that's what McGregor's done for me. So, um, so yeah, I mean. Facing a guy like uh, Brock Lesnar, uh, getting the world excited about a MMA fight, um, and ultimately making uh, some of those M's. Um, I mean, that's what we're here for, right? So, so yeah, it, it's been great to be on the sidelines and and just just watch all the different ways of being a champion. And, you know, I find inspiration in all these guys. You know, Demetrius has been such an inspiration, and and. Uh, I mean, everyone. My sister Holly Holmes, she's been a great inspiration. Just showing how you should never give up, right? Always fight for it, you know, despite what's happened. Um, I drop power and, and, and motivation from so many people, and I'm grateful for all the different sources. John, you, uh, it says you landed 95 significant strikes tonight, and it was pretty much all evenly divided between the head, the body, and the legs. Was that the game plan to kind of work him from, you know, head to toe? Yeah, that was, that was the game plan uh, to, uh, to attack the body. You know, Daniel said lots of times before, uh, that you know the body shots play dividends, and I knew that uh, the age difference also would would, uh, would be a factor. So yeah, I just wanted to try to destroy his body and uh, keep him guessing mainly, and uh, you know ultimately win the the long race. And you said on the conference call Monday that you think with everything that's happened, the fans have maybe forgot how great you are, that you're one of the biggest draws in the sport, all those kind of things. Uh, Dana White was out here earlier. He said this event's tracking to do more than a million buys. For you, do you think this, this fight? Yeah. This more than fight. a million buys? Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> this is great. So, what, a, what a way to come home. So, to you, do you think you expose yourself to the greater audience that everyone is going to realize you know, that you're back? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I felt like this was one of those fights that the world had to see. Um, it was the biggest fight of the year. And um, I even heard rumors that uh, Donald Trump was going to show up. Did any of you guys hear that? Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, to be a part of that, it, it, it's inspirational. Um, it lets me know that, that my story 
is one that the world could look at and, uh, and get something from. Um, it lets me know that, uh, that all the faith and all the hard work and consistency and, and pushing through, um, it's something that, that intrigues the world. I mean, there's never been a champion like me, uh, a young champion. Well, there has been, actually. Uh, I would say my career is kind of comparable to Mike Tyson, a guy who had it all, a guy who made a lot of mistakes. And uh, I think I'm like a modern situation, and I think people are interested to see how I'm going to handle it. And, uh, and I, think, I think that's what's most intriguing, is to see how someone can come back from so much bullshit. Right, so I'm glad to be. Uh, I'm glad to be out there. I'm glad to be out there. I'm glad to let my my, my life be a testimony for others. And then uh, finally, I actually asked you this question at the open workouts, but you misunderstood me. Um, how is this second title reign going to be different than the first one? What's it gonna you know What's gonna change for this one going forward? Well, my effort. My effort. I, I think I'll make a conscious effort to uh, just do better. I'm also a lot more aware of who I am and, and the responsibility that comes with being uh, a champion, a UFC champion. And so um, I don't want to sit up here and make promises and say that I'm going to be a saint because I'm a wild motherfucker at the end of the day. But um, I can try to do things better. I can make a conscious effort to try to make better decisions. And, uh, and I, think, I think that's enough. I, I think. Uh, I think me expecting out of, more out of myself will ultimately um, lead me into just being a better champion. I want to go and see my family and hang out, so I'm going to take off. Oh, look, you got a big old smile, so I'm going <laughs> to give you your last yeah. question. Yeah, first of all, congratulations, champ. You look like Thank you, you haven't spent a day out of the ring, um, out of the octagon. Thanks. Um, and not only do you look like that, you look like you improved. Um, why stylistically do you think a fight with Brock Lesnar um, would be super exciting as a super fight to the, to the fans? Well, I just think it's a winnable matchup. Um, uh, obviously, Brock Lesnar has uh, millions of followers outside of MMA, so that's huge for our sport to kind of steal some of those followers. Um, and um, I feel like Brock, you know, he has, he has, uh, he has a pretty limited game. And uh, I just think it's a winnable fight. And there's just so much reward that, that's involved. And I uh, just want to do it. And one more question. The one fight stylistically that the fans have been wanting to see for a while, and I know you said you didn't want to fight, um, what is a guy like Anderson Silva? Um, would you ever consider making that a super fight in the future? No, I have no interest in fighting Anderson Silva. <laughs> Anderson Silva has been uh, my inspiration for so many years. Um, he, is, uh, he is aging and he is still magnificent, um, but um, I, I, wouldn't, I would never want to defeat Anderson and I would never want to be defeated by Anderson. I, I would love to just have that open uh, vibe that we have where we can call each other, we can be there for each other, we can support each other uh, for years to come. Uh, there's something awesome when you go from being and uh, idolizing someone to that person being your friend um, and, uh, and that's what I that's what I have in a guy like Anderson so uh, I want to keep it fair enough God bless you guys